Well, praise the Lord. This is Stephen Camera here with you from A Walk in the Spirit. And we are on an adventure on something very new. And I hope that uh, you find it not only interesting and engaging and informative, but I hope that you find it spiritually uplifting and helpful in your walk in Christ Jesus. And um, this is, I'm doing this because I have been wanting to teach this lesson now for years. Um, a lot of people in the charismatic arena, uh, the apostolics, the Pentecostals, um, we have we have a lot of training. Yes, we have a lot of ministerial training. We have a lot of Bible college opportunities. But really, we don't have systematic theology and a seminary like many other faiths do. Now, that's not saying that I want to copy them and I want to have lessons that, you know, teach the Trinity and things like that. That's not what I'm here, not what I'm here to do. But what I am here to do is make an effort, a, um, a spiritually loving effort to provide quality education at a, a different level than just from within the church, from within the sermons. A preacher can only teach you so much, and a, and a Sunday school can only teach you so much in an hour, can only teach you so much uh, in an hour and a half um, of time. Your services only allow for so much headroom, okay? Uh, because in a service, you need a lot of things, right? And God God demands to be worshipped and praised and given glory during that, that time, during services. Uh, the service is for God and also for us to grow in grace, yes, and for us to grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there's a mix of things going on, right? You got music, you got presentations, uh, you, sometimes you got special holidays and events and things like this, dramas, etc., etc. And I'm not saying that those get in the way, but where do you go, where do you go, for deeper study into the Word of God that brings you into the realm of associate, um, uh, bachelor, and, and master's, and doctorate degrees. Where do you go? I had to go a whole bunch of other places, a whole bunch of different places. I had to study uh, and find good oneness Pentecostal apostolic studies on, on the web and colleges on the web to follow and to join because you know, we don't have things so readily available. So anyway, after all that discourse, I'm just here to say I want to provide for you these lessons, these lessons so that you can have a different way, a different avenue in learning about God and uh, raising your education level um, along with me. I'm sharing my education with you. Now, this is on audio, and there's a reason for that. The reason why it's on audio is because, again, these are lectures. This is part one of Attributes of God. This is the introduction to the Attributes of God in our Knowing God audio lecture series. Okay, so I'll say that again so you can write that down. Attributes of God. The Knowing God audio lecture series. You could just put attributes of God, knowing God. And this is just our introduction. And I thank you for hearing the introduction because this lays out all the foundation of how we're going to communicate with each other uh, throughout the series. Uh, I know this is one-way communication, but I want you to think of different things while we're, there's going to be different avenues we're going to be going down and laying groundwork for each road that we're going down to learn about who God is. See, and that's not easy because you're taking a God who is infinite, a God who is eternal, a God who is not linear, and you're putting him into a linear study. So, Time and time again, we've got to bring things into time, and God is outside of time. So let's wrap our minds around not being able to wrap our minds around everything about God, but that we can come to know what the Bible tells us and start digging in deeper about who God is through His Word, okay? Um, I want to communicate with you in levels that you can write these things down. And the reason, again, for the audio is because this is the most convenient for my communication to you. Now, if you are a visual learner, 
then I apologize because there's no chalkboard. Uh, there's no, uh, you know, computer in the background showing you the scriptures. This is where the rubber meets the road for you as an individual to have a Bible in front of you and to have paper and pencil in front of you or a, a, a laptop or a pad or whatever so that you can write down what I'm saying. You can write the bullet points down. You can write the study. You can write down your notes and take good notes. This is class. Let's, let's, let's get that dialed in. This is a study course. This is class. So this audio only is going to give you that opportunity. Now, for those who cannot see, uh, excuse me, for the, who cannot hear, uh, who may be deaf and who may, you may have, know somebody who is deaf, who wants to learn, uh, you can still use uh, the closed caption on the YouTube. That's why this is going to YouTube and not another platform. While it's on YouTube and you play it, you can play it with the closed captions and you'll see the words in front of you. And so will anybody who has uh, a, a problem with hearing. They will be able to take notes uh, via the closed caption. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it audio also is because, I said, as I said before, it is most convenient for me because I have a hard time finding time and place where there are zero interruptions. Zero. And, um, you know, we all have different areas where we can go, where we think that we have total uh, privacy. And then all of a sudden someone knocks or someone comes in or something happens and, and then everything's interrupted. So this being audio allows me to teach you. And if I do get interrupted, you won't, you won't know. <laughs> you won't know because I will press pause during the recording session and then continue where I left off. And so this helps, this is just going to be beneficial for this to be recorded for you. By the time it gets posted for you on YouTube, it's going to be in, in its entirety, uninterrupted, and then you can do it at your disposal, right? It's at your disposal to go through it as you want. You could pause it, you could rewind it, you could go over it, over and over again, as I do on many of the lessons that I listen to, and uh, it just gives you more uh, versatility, I should say, and me more versatility. Okay. All right. That's enough. Uh, the reasons are there. The, you can call them excuses, but they're not. They're reasons. And again, I want you to have your Bible. I want you to have your paper. I want you to have your laptop. I want you to have your computer. I want you to engage in learning and not just hearing the word of God and then you know, maybe meditating on it in your mind a little bit. No, I want you to read the scriptures. I want you to write down what I'm telling you. I want you to study, to show yourself approved, like the Bible tells us. Okay. All right. Introduction to the attributes of God. So here it actually begins our introduction. Worthwhile relationships. Any relationship is based on knowledge. Can we agree on that? Any relationship is based on knowledge. If you have a relationship with somebody, you need to know something about them. Even if you just meet somebody, that relationship is based on the fact that you don't know anything about them other than how they appear, other than how they may sound, how you may have watched them for a moment or seen them otherwise, but you've never directly met them. So for example, if I were to uh, have anything to say about my, the owner of my company, um, I only know so much, the company that I work for. I only know so much. And based on that knowledge, based on, on that information, I can tell you about the owners of my company or the owner of my company and give you and, and give you and communicate to you a general idea about what I've learned about that person and what I know about them. And our relationship can never go further than our knowledge of each other. Okay? N relationships go from different levels because knowledge of because of increase of knowledge let me say that again the increase of a relationship can only happen if there's an increase in knowledge marriage children when you're married and you spend time together and learn about each other as you're learning about each other and as the years pass if you truly are in a good relationship 
and care about one another. You're going to start learning more and more and more as the years pass until you get to where I'm at, almost married for 20 years, where you can finish some of your spouse's sentences. You know what they're thinking many times before they even say it. Just by their demeanor, just by their look, you know what's going on. See, because your relationship has grown because your knowledge of them has grown. Well, the same thing is with God. When we first meet God, we don't consider that we really know everything about Him. Usually when we meet God, we meet Him through the knowledge of Christ Jesus, right? His Son. We, we, we know God through the gospel that is being taught to us so that we can be saved. And that's how we start learning about Jesus. Now, I will say this about the apostolic Pentecostals and the oneness uh, theology is that we are very good at describing the oneness of God and, and preaching and teaching the oneness of God so that at the outset, somebody who is coming to Christ understands that they're not just coming to Christ, they're coming to God. They're coming to the Father. They're coming to the Spirit through Christ Jesus, who in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Um, if you don't know what I mean, we will, we're going to get into those classes too. We're going to get deeper into that oneness, probably more than you've ever, ever gone before. Uh, I've, I've been doing this now, as I've said, for quite quite many years. Actually, the same amount of years that I've been with my wife, I've been in the Lord. And that's not to say that I, um, I'm i special and I know more than others. There are people who have been in the Lord less than me and know more than me because they study more and the Spirit uh, reveals more and they have a different relationship. But what I do know is I know that I can never get enough of learning about God. And I want to share that with you. Okay, As we come to know more about God, we understand how to carry on a relationship with Him because God is a personal God. God is a person. God is a spirit who dwells in the person of Christ Jesus. Okay? And so the Father and the Son are one and they are a... God is a person. He's personal. He speaks. He moves. He talks. He came down. He took on flesh. He ate. He was hungry. He was tired. He fished. He walk. He talked. He slept. Amen. We need to better understand God because a vibrant relationship with God is rooted in a firm understanding of who he reveals himself to be, who he reveals himself to be. Now, who does he reveal himself to be? That's, I guess, the question of questions. Who is God really? I mean, we could say we know God is Jesus. We could say we know God is the Holy Spirit. We could say we know God is the Father. But what does that mean? What does that mean? Okay. So there's a message that Dr. Steve Lawson. Now, I, I do listen uh, and, and study uh, some books that are from the Reformation. And of course, uh, that's a different lesson altogether. But we all know that, you know, we are we are of the Protestant 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 faith meaning we're not catholic we came from the catholic church because of martin luther and because he learned that justification is by faith alone in christ alone and that we can't work or earn our salvation and and this separated him from the catholic church and this caused the 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 protestant reformation to happen and we come out of that as a faith okay now, Dr. Steve Lawson, he's one of my mentors, and he has a great lesson that I'm basically uh, uh, shadowing. I'm basically using that formula to, to study with you, okay? Because there's no reason to fix what isn't broke. Now, this systematically takes us through a, an awesome lesson of knowing God, of learning about his attributes, Okay, He presents an overview of God's defining attributes, is what we're doing, and invites us to pursue a more intimate and worshipful relationship with God. So what's the reason we're getting together, really? Not just for a higher education, but to define the attributes of God and to pursue an intimate relationship with God, a deeper, more intense relationship with God. We should know God more than we know the closest person in our lives. I should know God more than I know my own wife, okay, or my own children. That's how I should know God. I should know God deeply, truly, 
sincerely because of time spent with him in his word and time spent with him in the spirit and time spent with him in prayer, in prayer, okay? Scripture readings, Exodus 15, 11 through 13, Psalm 55, 8 through 9, and Psalm 89, 5 through 8. So let me give you time to get to Exodus chapter 15, 11 through 13. Exodus chapter 15, 11 through 13. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? You stretch out your right hand and the earth swallows your enemies. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. This tells you a lot about God. God, there's nobody like him. There's nobody holier than him. He is all holiness. He is all glory. He stretches out his right hand. And yes, this the Spirit of God doesn't have a hand, but Jesus does. Jesus does. And remember, in John 1, there wasn't anything that was made that wasn't made through the Word made flesh, who was Christ Jesus. There wasn't anything that wasn't made without the Son. Okay? And he says that His unfailing love will lead us. God, God's love does not fail. That's what this, this tells you. And he has strength. He alone has all strength and all power. He alone is holy and separate. He alone is God. Okay? So that's the first one. Exodus 15, 11 through 13. Take that and keep it. Okay? Then we have Psalm. Okay? Psalm 55, 8 through 9. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Wow. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, and de for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Violence and strife. See, we know that there's a beautiful God and that we live in a place that's become something that's not beautiful. It is still glorious. There's still wonder in life, but it has been marred. It has been changed. We know it's been changed because of sin, and so does the psalmist. We, we, we long to escape from this kind of earth and this kind of life into the life that's eternal and the new heaven and the new earth. We long and groan for our new bodies. We long and groan for the coming of the Lord and for us to be changed in the blink of an eye. Praise God. This is the God who delivers us from sin. Amen. And then next, Psalm 89, 5 through 8. Psalm 89, 5 through 8. And the heavens shall praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in the heaven can be compared to the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be like the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O Lord, God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like you? Or to whose faithfulness round about are you? Look, this tells us that God is faithful. God is to be praised and worshipped by the people of his congregation, by his saints, by those he chose, those he saved, those he called out to, those he transferred from darkness to light. And he's still to be greatly to be feared. So this God that many times preachers and teachers say, God is love, come as you are, do as you will. See that last part, do as you will, that no, God is love, come as you are. Do the will of God. Change your ways. Repent. Repent. And the life of repentance is the life of the Christian. So 
That's something as we come to learn about God, God doesn't change. It's not like from the Old Testament to the New Testament, Jesus went from being the God that he was in the Old Testament to being this new God in the, in the Old Testament to the, this new God in the New Testament. The Old Testament and the New Testament still show us Jesus. God was always love. God was always righteous. God always had wrath for sin and destruction for those who would oppose him. Always, and still does. The only difference is in the New Testament, he provided a way when there was no way that outshined the law. Jesus himself, God in the flesh, outshined the written law. Okay, and the law of Moses. So, we have a better path. We have a better understanding of God. We have a better access to God now. Those are the changes that, that happened in the New Testament, al along with many other changes. But it's still the same God. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so is God. And we'll learn about that as one of his attributes as well. God is never and never changing. God is the same. Always. You can count on that. So our teaching objectives, okay, moving forward for the entirety of this lesson, is to provide definitions and examples of the divine attributes of God. Okay? Definitions and examples of divine attributes of God. To discuss the ways in which these attributes describe God. We're going to discuss them. Or I'm going to discuss them and you're going to learn. To show how theology will affect our life and our worship. Because the, how, what we know of God, that's theology, study of God, theo, God, ology, study, study of God, theology, theology. It affects our life and it affects our worship. It affects how we come at God and how we come at life. Okay? So we have a lecture outline and I'm already hearing uh, somebody who's listening to me right now is saying, I hope that I can get a copy of the outlines at least. I will provide a copy of of the outline for each of these lessons on our website, awalkinthespirit.com. And I'll put it all together on a separate page. As the lessons come out, then uh, you'll see the lesson and uh, you'll see the link to print a PDF of the outline. Okay, so don't worry. You'll st you can get that to follow along. And that should help you. And it should help also help you take notes. Okay. So the lecture outline is the importance of a right understanding of God because there is wrong understanding of God. And many false teachers, there's a way that seems right, <laughs> but that path leads to destruction. There's a wide gate and a narrow gate. We want to be on the narrow gate. We want to know the true God, the true and living God. We don't want to know a God of our own making. That's an idol. So the importance of right understanding of God. And... An understanding of high views, an understanding that high views of God lead to high and holy living, right? So the lower view you have of God and what he is, who he is, what he can do and, and, and who he can do it to and how he can do it. Once you start knowing God, that gives you a higher view of God. And the higher view you have of God, the lower view you'll have of God yourself. Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive to what the world says. The world says you should be positive and you should have a high view of yourself. Well, yes, because you are fearfully and wonderfully made, you should understand that. But everything that is to be valued about you came from God and all that glory goes to God. Everything else that we offer God is nothing. Nothing. We come to God. We came into this world with nothing, and we will arrive to God with nothing but what's in our hearts, and what we've done on this earth. That's what we arrive with: what we've done on this earth and what's in our hearts. Wow. Okay, I'm learning from my own lesson right now. Number three: low views of God lead to low and a base way of interacting with God. This is important because if you think God likes you flipping around on the floor. Okay, if you think God wants you to run around the church for the entire service and not listen to his word, then you have a low view of God and a low view of his word. If you think you're going to have a service for the Lord 
And in that service, you're going to do nothing having to do with the actual word of God. You've got a low view of having a service and who you're having a service for. God's word does not come back void. But you have to have his word in order to have his word. And so we need to put God, his worship and his word on the highest levels of what we do in our services. We can't have low views of God. It makes us have low services where people come out of the church and you can stand outside and ask them, what did you learn in that service? And they'll tell you, I learned about Jesus. Well, what about him? I don't know, but it was an awesome service. But what'd you learn? I don't know. Well, if you don't know what you've learned, then you've learned nothing. And if you've learned nothing, and you're just walking away with a good feeling that you is a that's a fleshly thing that's not a spiritual thing you haven't grown in grace at all that was not time well spent so we can't have a low view of god in order to serve and worship him right we have to have that high view so let me review the importance of a right understanding of god so that we can have a high level of understanding so that it can lead to high and holy living so that we don't have a low understanding of God so that we won't have a low and base way of living. Okay? So this teaching series is going to promote a high value of God by examining now all of God's attributes that we can. All of God's attributes that we know we're going to, we, we are going to share with you. Okay? An attribute refers to a quality or a characteristic that belongs to a person. We all have attributes. We all have quality and characteristics. God has quality and characteristics that are only his. And he also has quality and characteristics that he transfers to us and to the world. Okay. This is defined as communicable and incommunicable attributes. Okay. Now this is where people start saying, oh gosh, where's my, where's the spelling of this? So I, where, where's my, where's my bullet point so that I can see how this is spelled? It's pronounced communicable, that which can be communicated, and incommunicable, that which cannot be communicated, and it belongs to God only. Okay, communicable attributes such as love, wisdom, these find their fullest expression in God, okay, but can be communicated. They can be learned. They can be copied. Not, not so much as just copied, you know, pretend copied. But they, in other words, the Holy Spirit can show us what to do. And we can do it in the right motive, in the Spirit of God. His will is communicated to us. And we're able to carry out that will. And we're able to carry out the characteristics that are the fruit of His Spirit. Those are communicable attributes. But then there's attributes that, that we don't get that God has. And those are incommunicable. That is his unchangeableness or his immutability. His omniscience or his all-knowing. His omnipresence. His all-being everywhere, all at once, all the time. Uh, his omnipotence, his all-power. We don't have that. We don't have that. And just to prove it to you, God, with his word, spoke, let there be light. Right now, I cannot say... Uh, in the dark, let there be light unless I turn on a light switch. I just can't make the sun come up. I can't make light come from nothing. I can't make something from myself. I can't. I can't just from my words or from my mind make it happen. Now, I can build something that I have. I can envision something and I can put together something. I can write something. I can do that, okay? But I can't, I can't do it like God. God speaks it, and it is. Okay? God is all power. God is all knowing. God is all seeing. And we are not. So, again, communicable and incommunicable attributes. God's ap attributes have crucial, crucial applications. Okay? Knowing who God is, it affects our lives. So this is going to affect our lives, yours and mine. This is not an academic intellectual series purely it is but not purely not only okay this is so that we can learn together as i'm teaching you what i've learned and as you're learning what i'm teaching you to teach somebody else we are growing like never before and it's going to change the way again that we live unto god worship unto god and serve god only when we know god can we truly worship him in spirit and truth. And knowledge of God keeps us 
anchored. Folks, if you struggle like I do with sin every day, every day, I'm repenting all the time. My lack of patience, my frustration, my anger, my negative thinking, my, my talking negatively sometimes about individuals or myself or situations. Uh, I'm constantly still growing in grace. I moved from drugs and addiction and, and, and listening to heavy metal music and playing rock and roll and, and blasphemous music. Uh, yes, I grew in grace. I was saved in Jesus name. And I stopped doing those things. I stopped drinking. I stopped doing drugs, but other sins, they still followed me in my walk as they would follow you. As many of you probably still have sins that follow you, that you haven't completely had victory over. These sins are going to start to surface as we study Him. Because the more we study God in His light, the more that light shines on our sin. Amen? So I don't want you to think that this is going to be something that is going to take you to the next level so that you could be high-minded and start talking down to people. No, 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 no. I don't talk down to people because I'm learning, ever learning. And whenever I'm teaching, I'm sharing that knowledge. I'm sharing that knowledge, and I believe that all knowledge should be shared, should be shared. And I think it's a shame that some churches believe that some things should only be taught to the ministers, you know, or those that are in the clergy. I think that's, I think that's wrong, okay? And that is an opinion, so please mark that. That's an opinion. But think about this. Think about the connotation of that. We move from the Catholic Church to the Protestant faith because things were closed up to us in the Bible and in God's word. And then we trusted that the church and the ministers, or at that time, right, and still at this time, the priests, those were the people that divulged the information and taught us how to live. And we barely need, as, I'll tell you what, as a Catholic, I barely knew the scriptures. I counted on the church taking care of everything. That's not the case. Okay, so we come out as a, as a reformed church, as a church that knows that we, we should all study to show ourselves approved. And then we join churches that say, yeah, well, this study is for the, the, for the ministers only. Okay, fine. There's meetings and studies that they want to gather the ministers so that they can learn about certain things. That's great. But I think it should still be available to me because I want to know what you're teaching them. I want to know what you're teaching them because what if God has called me to be a minister? And now I can learn from these lessons, right? You should know what your pastor knows. You should understand what your pastor understands. So that when your pastor does make decisions, you can understand where he's coming from, biblically. Because the more you know the Word and the more you study the, the Word of God in God through the ministers, through the ministerial body, the better you are able to serve Him. Now, some of us have positions in the church where we don't need uh, credentials. We don't need a license to be able to serve. You know, we might teach a Sunday school class or we might play on a piano or, or sing in the choir. Oh, so then we don't need to know the high things of God. Yes, you do. I firmly believe that materials should be available to everybody, all the way from the associate, all the way to the master's and doctorate degrees for everyone. And I believe it should be available at no cost because the Word of God doesn't cost anything. The Word of God is free. He freely gave His Word so that we could learn about Him and know Him and serve Him and live for Him correctly. Okay? So, now you know my heart in this lesson. I'm sharing the love. I'm sharing the learning. I'm sharing the experience. I'm sharing that level that's been shared with me. And I hope that this is a blessing for you. This is the introduction. This is where we're going. And just so that we have an idea of what's coming next, what's coming next is that there is a God. Proof of the existence of God. Now, for those of you who are in the church, have been in the church, have been following God or in the Lord for some time, or for those of you who just know, of course, I believe in God. Okay? There are many people, as we all know, that do not believe in God. And when you talk to somebody about God and evangelize to them that there is a God, how do you do that? How can you answer somebody who refutes the existence of God? This is called apologetics. Apologetics. And it's given a reason. 
We have a reason. God is a reasonable God, and God wants us to reason with others. The reason of God. And so that's what we're going to tackle next time. We're going to tackle there is a God and the two ways that God has revealed himself. And then those are the two main ways. And then the little tiny ways, the separate ways, the subways in those, the subways, get it, uh, that God has uh, revealed himself. So God has revealed himself in nature. Okay. And God has revealed himself in his word. And there's a lot of connotation in that. God has revealed himself in human conscience. Okay, so, and, and that word attaches to the conscience. <laughs> okay, because, well, we're just going to study that. We're going to go way deep into that, okay? The human conscience and through nature itself, even people who are not Christian know there is a God. They can deny it. They can say they don't believe it, but they have a soul that does because their soul came from God. And the truth is being crushed. The truth is being held back. The truth is being denied even though it's there. Because you can deny something all you want. doesn't mean it's not there. I can deny I can deny that something's standing right in front of me. A person, a place, a thing, whatever. Something's right in front of me. I could say that's not so. But that doesn't mean that that's the case. Truth is, every human being inside of them deep inside of them, knows that God exists. And we're going to talk about how they know that and how we knew that even before we came to Christ. So, introduction to the Attributes of God, Knowing God lecture series. I hope that you have enjoyed this introduction. I'm going to start now working on your uh, paperwork, your PDF, so that you can read along with this if you like. Um... And by the time you're, you're studying this, you'll probably already have uh, the lesson plan uh, and the notes that I have down uh, in front of you. Please, again, bring your Bible, open your Bible, whether it's on computer or, or re- a, a Bible that, that's a book, in book form. Study, man. And I, I personally, no matter, I have a computer, I have a laptop, but when I open the pages and get to those books on my own, when I write down with pen and ink, it helps me learn better. Typing, it just doesn't do it. When you're writing things down and you're saying it back to yourself as you're studying, you're reading, you're writing, you're listening, you're, you're attacking all of your senses to absorb the lesson that God is giving us. And to me, there's just, there's just, there's nothing that can take that place. So I encourage you to be Bible-bringing believers, praise God, and note-taking believers. If you can't take notes during a sermon, and I wonder if it's a sermon at all, you could quote that. If you can't take notes during a sermon, then was it even a sermon at all? (laughs) All right, till the next lesson, and I'm going to try to shoot these out uh, at least twice a month, twice a month. So uh, whenever this is posted... Uh, you should be able to find the next one uh, uh, one to two to three weeks later, but at least two each month until we're finished, until we're finished with the Attributes of God, Knowing God series. Till next lesson, I say it just like the, uh, uh, the uh, Bible teacher, J. Vernon McGee. I like what he says, and I, and I repeat it because I, I don't want it to just go away. He says, until next time, may the Lord richly... Bless you.